Hello, welcome back to the grid trading series. This is part seven. In part six, I showed one of the suggestions to the grid trader, which was to close everything when equity reaches certain targets. And that basically eliminates the holding of trades for a long time to minimize the swap that you might pay on this strategy. Uh, but I did say at the time, that was fine in the strategy tester, the way that I'd written it, and that I would come back and show how you could modify this to run live. And there are a couple of problems if you do run that live. I also realize some people might be jumping into these. They might find these videos through a YouTube search and you might be lost as to where we are. This isn't necessarily a beginning to end series. What I did was start with a basic grid trader and then I've modified that a couple of times and then I've implemented various suggestions, but those suggestions haven't been building on each other. So I keep going back to the base. So just to show where we are in the path, part one, started with the basic grid trader. Part two, I modified that same grid trader to run on MT4. And then in the sequence to this video, in part four, I removed some code that was duplicated for buy and sell. So all those conditions you typically find in code where you say, if I'm buying, if I'm selling, I removed all of those to make the code common, to make it easy to read and remove duplicate code. And then in part six, as I said, I implemented the modification suggested here, which is to close everything on equity targets. And now we're up to part seven. So the purpose of this video is not to revisit the code in the earlier parts, but I'm going to be updating the code at the end of part six to solve two problems. The first is that you will probably be restarting MetaTrader at various times and all the internal variables will get reset. And the second is that by simply looking at overall equity, you might run into issues if you're executing some manual trades of your own or if you have other experts or the same expert on different symbols running. So that will address the situation where I simply want to look at the profit on this particular expert and close everything when it reaches targets. So let's go straight to the code and get onto this. So I'm going to start by making a new version. This is 1.005 where I left off last time. I'm just going to make a 1.006 open containing folder, copy the version 1.5, rename that to 6, and then I can come back in here and just change that to a 6, open the main file, comment, change the version number, and change that. Just quickly check to make sure that still compiles. It does. The first thing I want to do though, uh, if we go to, you might remember last time I said that I had made a mistake by putting this INP magic in this file. This is a common include file. If I try to compile this, it simply has an error because of this INP magic that doesn't exist. And you shouldn't rely on global variables and the values of global variables inside common include files. It's all right to use it in this leg file which is actually part of the expert. Uh, but because this is a common include, you can't rely on that always being there if you use this same file in a different expert. So I'm just going to fix that. It won't take long. So first step, I've just created a variable called mmagic. That's a long type. And now I'm going to create properties to set and get that value. Now these are my two uh, properties, the get and the set. Uh, I'll just mention quickly, a lot of people will like to put, uh, or will like to name these as get magic and set magic. I don't, it's just a personal preference, it doesn't matter at all, you can do it either way you like. The second thing you'll notice though, is that for the set function, this where I'm setting the value to value, I'm returning the same value again, where quite often set functions have a void type. Uh, this is just my way of using a, a shorthand occasionally. Um, in cases where you might want to, for example, set a value based on some kind of function and use the value again later in the code as well as setting the property. So typically you would do something like this. Let's write some code in here. You might have um, So that would be a typical method for doing this. By returning this value, I can shorten that just a little bit. Uh, 
And so that's the only reason I do it. It causes no problems to have this returning a value. Um, and I can just use this kind of shorthand. Now this is a fairly trivial example, but I have found cases where it does simplify my code a bit. So that's the first step. And next I want to remove the use of INP magic here and change that to M magic. Right, so that takes care of the changes to this common include file. I can compile that now and it works. Uh, but I need to actually get this magic number into the file. I've made the M magic a protected variable, so it's already available to this leg that's inside the expert. I will do two things here then. First, I'm setting the variable by using the magic function, using the global variable. And then remember, that's all right here because it's inside the leg class that is part of the expert. Um, this is also not great code, but I don't mind for this case. Uh, then I'm just going to remove all uses of INP magic from this leg and change them to M magic. And that compiles now. Okay. So that takes care of that small problem that I had earlier. So now let's move on and look at the first case where the problem is that I ran this uh, test over 15 months. It's easy to do in the strategy tester, but in real life, if you tried to run something for 15 months, you're probably going to restart. And if we look at the main where we made the changes, I have this equity start value that is an internal variable. And if you restart, MetaTrader, then you're going to lose the value in that. So it's not really practical to do this in a live situation. So what I want to do is find an easy way of knowing what that equity start was if it gets restarted. And the simple way is to use global variables. Now, again, this is something of a personal preference, but I like to have a class that handles my global variables. I've already created here inside Orchard Persistence. This includes Orchard Persistence, uh, and I've got GVAR. I have a folder called persistence because I might have classes for file storage and so on. But in this case, I'm just using global variables. I've already created the class global variables. I'm including object and I've set up the class C GVAR inheriting from C object. I maintain an internal variable called key. So if you think about global variables, you'll want to set them from all kinds of different places and you may have two different experts that are trying to set a global variable for something like uh, last price. I use this initial key as a prefix to that. So this key will contain information that lets me identify the symbol and the expert that we use to set this particular global variable. I'm going to have another function that's internal called get key and that gets passed a subkey. So once I've set this key prefix, if I want that last price, then subkey would be last price. And all this get key function does is concatenate those so that I get a single key that I can use to get and set the global variable. For the constructor, I take one argument, that's a key, and that's what will go into this prefix key. And then I have get and set methods for the global variables. And in this case, I have called them get and set. There are two reasons for that. Firstly, there is no name. It's just a get and a set of this subkey. So I have nothing else to call them other than get and set. But secondly, the arguments to these are the same, string double and string double. So the compiler would know, have no way of knowing the difference if I called them both the same name. The constructor is very simple in this case. I'm just assigning the key that's passed in as the master key, which is the, as I said, the prefix. Now this is a very simple function because so far I'm not doing much in this class, but just in case there was something more complex in the creation of this key that's going to be used for accessing the global variable. Uh, it's better to put all of this into a single function rather than rely on performing this every time you want to access a global variable.
Now in the get function, um, I'm initializing value to the default value. I could have just not initialized, it doesn't really matter. I get the key using the get key function and then I'm calling global variable get passing that key and the value that I want to return the value in. So this is a reference argument. This will return a false if the global variable get is unsuccessful, for example, if it doesn't exist. And in that case, I simply want to assign the default value to the value and then I return value. So you get back um, the same value that was passed in as part of this result. And that's the default value, just in case the global variable doesn't exist. I've chosen in this case not to set the global variable if it doesn't exist. That's uh, something I don't need so far. Uh, so this is really just setting a default value if it's not found. And the set function is very simple. Again, I just build up the key using the get key function called global variable set for the key and the value. That's this argument here. And then I return the value. Uh, global variable set does return a value from that function. It returns the date time that the uh, value was set, but I just don't need it, so I'm not worrying about that there. So that should be the GVAR class. Let me make sure no errors there. Now to go back to my expert, I'm going to go to config. I'm going to add a line where I include that GVAR file. So now I have the GVAR class available to the rest of the code. I'm going to create a variable for that. And this is in the main where I'm doing all of those tests to see if we've hit the equity value. I still have an equity start value or an equity start variable here, but I'm going to be using the global variables to store that in between restarts. Just to set up this global variable, Now remember, I'm handling the very simple case here where this is the only expert running on your account. Uh, so there's no need to worry about any other experts or other copies of this single expert. So I'm just using Grid Trader as the key here. And so I'm calling CGVAR with that key, which initializes that as the prefix to any values I want to store in global variables. Now because I've created this GV, I need to delete it when I'm finished. And I, just in case this is a restart, I don't want to simply get equity start from the account info. What I want to do is try to get it from the global variables. Equity start equals get equity start. This is a function that I'm going to write because when I use these kind of global variable properties, I like to have a function inside my application that gets those values for me rather than relying on putting the key values in here. Again, because it centralizes everything and avoids simple typing mistakes where I might put the wrong key into one of the calls. And I'm passing a default value of zero to that. If I get zero back for the equity start, then I'm going to set equity start equal to set equity start for the account equity. So account info double, account equity, that's this same function. I'm getting the current account equity. And remember, the set equity start is going to be the match for this get equity start, and it will set that value. And remember that I'm returning the argument, so I can simply assign that to equity start. Get rid of this line. Uh, so let's create this get equity start and set equity start function. I'm creating a defined value GV equity start and I'm putting the key into that. Rather than repeat this string throughout the code, I'm just going to repeat or use that defined value. There's my get equity start function, takes an argument double value, and it returns what I get back from the global variable dot get for that equity start. That's the sub key and the value. And the set equity start takes the same argument, and this is again a reason why I've called these get and set. It returns the global variable set with that equity start sub key and the value. So once I have a starting equity, there is a point in this code where I reset the equity start. 
I want to make sure I reset the global variable at the same time. And that way, if I do get a restart, this value will be stored in the global variable and I'll pull it straight back in the initialization. So the same syntax I used before, I'm using the set equity start, which will return this value and I can put that straight into the equity start variable. Now, if there's one more thing to remember, let me just add a blank line here for readability. Global variables are automatically erased after four weeks if they're not used. Now, because this is the equity start and there could be periods where we go for four weeks or more before that is used and updated, I need to make sure this gets refreshed every now and then. So I'm going to add some code in here to refresh the handling of that. So if this is a new bar, then I just reload equity start with what is in the global variable. Um, now this should have been set earlier. I'm not worried about it unless you manually go into your terminal and start deleting these global variables. It will still be there as long as this on tick happens more frequently or this new bar happens more frequently than once every four weeks, then this will just keep equity start alive. Uh, the is new bar function is not here yet. Let me create that. Now you've seen this many times before, but uh, just in case you haven't, I'm setting up a static date time variable called previous time. And the first time this function runs, that will be set to zero. Every time the function runs, I'm getting the current time, which is the I time for the current symbol and period on bar number zero. So that's the start time of the currently open bar. Every time a new bar opens, this is going to change to a new time. So if the previous time is not equal to the current time, then I've opened a new bar. I make previous time equal to the current time and return true because it's a new bar and otherwise I'll return false. And just because I've called this is new bar, I'm going to try to be consistent. I'm going to call it is trade allowed. That will generate an error somewhere, but I'll fix it when I get to the compile. And I think that's everything I need for the simple case where I'm just going to store this in a global variable. Let me go back to grid trader compile. I'll find that error. Is trade allowed. and that all compiles. So that should be fine for storing the value during restarts. There's not really anything that I can show in the strategy tester for this, that's just fixing the code. Now at that point, you have an expert advisor that will survive restarts. And this video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to stop here. But the other thing that I want to show is what do you do if you are maybe running this same expert on two different symbols, um, running some other experts, or even manually trading because all of those things will also be changing the equity. So it's not sufficient to simply test the equity at the point you started running the expert and the equity now, because all those changes can be affected by the other things that you're doing. So what you probably want to do is track the profit and loss made with this particular expert running on this symbol and compare that with the open trades that are there and get the total profit and loss and then know when you need to close out all of the trades on this expert alone. So to do that, I have a different technique. It will achieve the same result as the technique I've shown, but it's more complicated because it needs to handle a more complex situation. And because this video is becoming a bit too long, I'm going to stop here and pick up in another video where I will show those techniques as well. So for now, if you have other suggestions on how to improve the grid trader, then please leave comments and I'll try to get through as many of those as I can in the future. Thank you for watching.